Okay, go ahead now. Okay, so uh, let me point to the agenda of the meeting. Everybody can see my screen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, today we're going to talk about the uh, ESG as a missing piece of digital transformation revolution. And uh, I'll uh, start with introducing uh, our uh, guest presenter, uh, Dr. Alex Lee. Uh, this is the agenda that we're going to uh, talk about today. Um, digital transformation, we use DX as, as an acronym, is what is it and what is not? Uh, I guess this is a bit of a prov provocative question and we'll try to answer during the uh, first module of the presentation. Uh, we turn after to Dr. Lee for using uh, digital transformation in gen generating ESG reports, opportunities lost. And uh, I also present the case studies on ESG risks uh, caused by digital transformation. I focus on the case of Ford Motors Company, one of the major electric vehicles uh, companies. So without any further ado, um, I would like to uh, Dr. Lee to, to introduce uh, himself. Hi, I'm, I'm Alex. Uh, I am a, a 30 years experience in, in high tech area, especially the IT and telecom and digital area. And then uh, my uh, the current focus is to in the views of the uh, IT and digital expert, how I can some contribute to the this ESG sustainability community. So I intensely research and, and studied what the, the current status of the ESG sustainability management and investing. And then I identify several issues and uh, the the challenges, and then in my insight that they can be changed, uh, they can be solved. In my insight, using my previous previous experience expertise in in digital technologies, so especially digital transformation, is the best solution to solve this kind of the current issues and challenges in ESG uh, sustainability management and investing. So I'm going to talk about that especially how we can solve and specifically what kind of solution we can develop. So that's, that's what I'm going to talk about today. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll make a brief introduction. Um, I am Manuel Wexler. I'm the executive director of the um, Actionable Knowledge Foundational Institute, which is an uh, in industry forum uh, working on uh, um, uh, creating a more complete picture of ESG and digital transformation impact, uh, especially in the areas of risks uh, and risks of investments. Um, and uh, that will be the main topic of today's presentation as well. Uh, I uh, want to mention that uh, we have a QA uh, session at the end, um, which again will be moderated by uh, Anatoly Levine, and um, he's, he's already joined our call today. Uh, to start, uh, I uh, just wanted to share a question with you. Do you think that uh, the uh, Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp failure can happen with other major providers of services? Let's say with Zoom. And what will be the impact of this kind of failure on the economics, on the social, and of course, on the uh, governance of the, or the response of the governance of different companies? Uh, let's keep in mind, for instance, that Zoom is widely used by many professions, not only by meetings for companies, but also by the medical profession, by the legal profession, so you can imagine how this uh, kind of uh, events, uh, we call them sometimes black swan events, can really impact the ESG. And the question I want to leave you with uh, as we move to the first slide is, um, 
do you think that that will be reflected in the ESG report of this year or next year of these companies? Uh, my take is the answer is no. Uh, since ESG reporting, it's also looking at cybersecurity risks and cyber attacks risks, not failure of the system do it in this case, probably human error. So let's continue. A little bit about AKFI, the short for the Actionable Knowledge Foundational Institute, which is, I mentioned already, it's a non-profit. It's an industry forum uh, in the stage of formation. Uh, we have uh, a global vision to prepare for catastrophic events uh, together. And by doing that to uh, help and ensure the survival of human enterprises. Uh, we work to create actionable knowledge. The emphasis is on actionable as opposed to academic knowledge, let's say, and use it to mitigate large scale unpredictable events and their impact. In the process, we hope and we want and we wish to save lives to leverage the technology, in this case, digital transformation and digitalization, to limit uh, the economic, environmental, and social lo uh, losses. To start, uh, I am going to use a metaphor to describe how we can balance the corporate sustainability, resilience, and longevity risks. By sustainability, I'm uh, focusing primarily on here and now, the past and how we arrive today, and how we can sustain the daily operations of a company. Uh, by resilience is the ability of the company to respond properly and uh, timely to shocks, uh, to risks, uh, sometimes we refer to them as black swans, like risks which are unpredictable uh, and happen quite often as you noticed already. And last but not least, how this looks and projects in the long-term strategy of the company in terms of longevity, which is a key indicator for investors on uh, the, the uh, survivability of the company uh, after multiple shocks and changes and changes of technology and, and changes of regulations. So as I promised, here it's a metaphor. Long time ago, and not so long time ago, actually the, the corporate governance was in hindsight in what we consider today, uh, simple. It was only focused on profitability, what we call it economic value creation. The, the ability of the company to grow quarter over quarter, year over year, um, and, and keep growing at an accelerated pace. But that was some time ago. Uh, about 10 years ago, the digital revolution started. Uh, it started with the uh, uh, digitalization. Uh, we call it the, the technology or the, uh, the process of, uh, um, of introducing uh, digital technologies uh, in the operations of the company. As you can see here, uh, the uh, revolution also brought a, more, a much more complex governance model. Why? Because now the governance not only has to take care of the uh, value creation, of the economic value creation uh, and profitability, but which ensures the relationship with uh, uh, stockholders, but also to take care of stakeholders uh, in, in the terms of uh, uh, internal and external uh, culture of the company. And last but not least, to absorb a complex environment, as we've already mentioned at the beginning of the, the 
talk today uh, in terms of digital technology, which brings many, many benefits, but also uh, risks that are not uh, yet totally and clearly understood. And uh, this afternoon, or this morning rather, I'll uh, talk about how this uh, looks in the terms of electric vehicles, which of course span between new business models, uh, new culture even, and uh, enhanced governance uh, requirements. Uh, and uh, since digital transformation has many definitions, uh, I wanted to, to use a simple definition throughout this, uh, this uh, presentation, which is really uh, the application of digital technologies to impact all the aspects of business, society, and uh, ecology. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, when we add ESG transformation, and the emphasis here, ESG is a transformation process as much as digital is a transformation process or digitalization is a transformation process. It adds uh, even more complexity to um, the uh, executives and the board of directors, because now the responsibility is increased to social and environmental, hence the enterprise becomes an integral part of the ecosystem, of the natural ecosystem uh, of the planet, uh, of the uh, country, of the city, uh, and uh, on the, of the neighborhood the, the companies operate. Uh, it is recognized that that's coming uh, from large pressure from investors. As now a number of uh, investments uh, are uh, clearly looking at ESG performance as an indicator, as I mentioned at the beginning, as an indicator of sustainability uh, and uh, uh, longevity of the company. So let's put this together. What do we end up with? What we end up with, it's a model where uh, companies uh, uh, need to maintain uh, sustainability, resilience, and lo uh, longevity while the governance of the company uh, becomes more complex and it's a transformation, as I mentioned, of the digital uh, uh, nature as well as of the uh, environmentals and social. So uh, what, uh, what we end this metaphor with, uh, governance now has uh, what we call it five balls to deal with. The economic value creation, the profitability, which nobody uh, would like to remove from the core values of a company, uh, the digitalization or digital technology, <coughs> pardon me, the environmental and the social impact, which now uh, the environmental expands to all the natural inputs of a company, uh, from water and uh, air uh, to uh, the uh, emissions, the pollution, and the impacts on uh, different, uh, different uh, parts of the, the environment. Uh, and the social, which uh, it's um, definitely looking at the impact on the stakeholders, as well as internally, cultural changes, employee skills, uh, the customers and the community. And of course, the ESG is looking also on labor management, people, welfare, um, accidents, safety, work safety, and uh, many others. So now, now let's take the position of a insurance company uh, of a private or public investor, corporate investor, uh, which is really looking at the, uh, how using ESG, uh, you can predict future risks of the company. Uh, 
It's very nice to read the, the glossy ESG report, which says the company did very well last year. But is this a good indicator for the future or not? I'll leave this question to you while I'm trying to answer it. <clears throat> so let's have a look at uh, what ESG and digital transformation means in financial terms. As you can see on the left-hand side of the picture, the one with the black background, you can see clearly that the ESG assets under management uh, are on track to exceed about a third of the, um, or, or over a third of the uh, total investments, total global investments uh, for assets under management. That's a huge number. Just think that a third of the investments would be uh, partially assessed or assessed on, on uh, how the uh, ESG performance of the company, past, current, and future, is going to be um, is going to be measured and predicted. On the other hand, uh, no no small investment, about three point seven trillion dollars of uh, global digital transformation investments. And here I'll, I'll, I'll ring a warning bell. Currently, it's estimated that approximately 70% of these investments do not return the, uh, the value of the investment, do not return uh, profit, a profitable investment, do not create a profitable environment. So, Again, we're trying to answer the question, what is a better predictor for future risk? Reports or digital transformation, or maybe both. Let's have another look of, uh, of an important statistic about uh, companies where uh, family businesses, family ownership is still very large. You'll be surprised uh, but by the way, the definition of family ownership, it's uh, businesses in which the at least 30% of the uh, shares uh, of the company are held by uh, an individual or a family member. So you can, as you can see here, this is about 50% of the annual GDP in terms of companies and uh, about two thirds of the global workforce works for these kind of companies. And why is this important? Beside the names, Walmart, Volkswagen, Berkshire, uh, XOR in, in Europe. What is this important is uh, money talk. And one money talk tells us digital transformation is the main investment, is the main priority for investing. Why? Because really, these companies realize it's either you transform or you die. And I'm using a very strong term, but without digital transformation, the companies may uh, end up being broken down in pieces and, uh, and disappear. And when we compare this with ESG uh, priorities, we can see that, yes, and very encouraging, there are on the map, there are in the focus of these companies. However, they are not the top priority. They're on the bottom third of the priorities of the, the companies in, in, in the research. So what can we conclude from here? Money talks, digital transformation has priority, and ESG investments may end up with nice reporting, but much less uh, focus and governance and uh, investments from the company. Let's look a little bit um, then how, how this reflects in the ESG report. We, we expect that uh, companies will, um, uh, will include uh, the impact of digital transformation in their reports. And uh, if we look of, uh, of the sources of digital transformation failure, and, and as I mentioned before, these are uh, estimated as being about 70% of the projects 
uh, of digital transformation not coming to full fruition. As you can see, uh, there are many reasons the digital transformation fails, but you can point very quickly to social, uh, to cultural, to lack of skills, uh, lack of investment in reskilling on one hand, <clears throat> and uh, lacks governance on the other hand uh, in, in digital transformation. And when I say lack governance, I also include the fact <clears throat> that most executives, uh, especially in established, large established companies, uh, belong to a group of people uh, in, in generation that were not at the forefront of digitalization. So they, they may lack the skills, they may lack the focus, uh, they may consider it even a fad. On the other side, uh, since we talk about risks, there are another um, uh, discouraging statistic which shows that companies respond, respond very poorly to uh, disasters, to, in this case, to natural disasters. FEMA is in charge of national disasters in the US. And, uh, and uh, the, the mortality rate is really very high. Uh, uh, it's, it's the failure rate in two years, it's about 90%. So they struggle and clearly they struggle uh, with risk management with these black swan events, a hurricane, an earthquake, a flood and so on. So let's try to answer the question, can really ESG transformation be successful when digital transformation falters or fails or a natural disaster strikes? And surprisingly, the answer is yes. And why is surprising? Uh, because if you read, read the ESG um, reports from various companies that were subject to uh, ransomware, they were sub subject to cyber, uh, to, to technology failure, digitalization failure, um, the reports contain only one out of what Deloitte calls the, 10, the top 10 digital transformation risks. So very simply, uh, when you don't measure, when you don't report, when you don't show the complete picture of digital transformation risk, of course, you can have a good ERG report. Uh, I'm not saying it's a misleading report. I'm saying it's correctly reported. But that report is not uh, reflective. It's not presenting a complete picture for the investors on the risks uh, that uh, the company uh, assumes. And why is that? Well, simply put, and, and as the AKFI has uh, repeatedly presented to um, uh, forums of, uh, uh, of regulators, uh, simply put, is because digital transformation is not factored in the technology, the impact on people, the impact on social, the impact on governance, and the impact on environment are uh, poorly represented in the ESG reporting. So, what are the consequences? Uh, the title says it all. The um, the unsustainable uh, digital transformation and ESG transformation as well uh, uh, are uh, resulting in higher investment risks. <clears throat> if you look at this uh, uh, picture uh, on this graph on the left hand side, which is uh, coming from uh, a Cap Gemini study, uh, more than 50%, 55% of the thousand companies which were studied uh, did not accelerate the pace of the investments in ESG sustainability. What does it tell you? Probably these companies have good ESG ratings uh, and they do not feel compelled to put more funds in ESG. Let's think finance, let's think finance really 
the ESG fi funds come come out of the top line uh, of the revenues of the companies. So from a company, from an accounting, from a financial viewpoint, this represents really an investment with long-term return and arguably um, social good return, uh, uh, you know, meeting the social responsibilities, but not necessarily material returns, uh, cash, cash coming back into the company directly. It may come back in form of reputation. It can come back in form of uh, uh, avoiding um, regulatory pressure, but not necessarily showing on the bottom line in the same year. Uh, and uh, over 50%, 51% uh, of these companies did not leverage digital transformation, very important to improve sustainability. So while they invest in two pots of money, as I said, digital transformation seems to be on the top line of investments and in uh, ESG, these companies do not put, the governance doesn't put together the, the, uh, to, to create a more sustainable uh, and to actually benefit overall from improved sustainability, resilience, and longevity. So how can we improve? Uh, the um, obvious answer is uh, they have to be or, uh, orchestrated, coordinated, and governed together. Uh, the transformation of digital, the digitalization, and the ESG transformation. Um, as a metaphor, let's think, remember the, the five balls that we talked about it. As a metaphor, and I'll talk about them again shortly. Uh, the governance, the executives, the management, the board of directors have to navigate a relatively straight channel, uh, we call it the straights, uh, of the value and risk. Uh, steering the wrong way may definitely topple the, the company. And the size of the company is not necessarily an indicator of how stable they will be as they go through the uh, this uh, value and risk straits. Uh, so again, when you transform uh, uh, and you you subject to multiple transformations, major transformations, ESG and digital in the same time, uh, the the governance of the companies uh require significant improvement so i call this uh, so akfi came uh, with an initial uh, sustainability frameworks we like to call it ages uh, for environmental or for excuse me economic uh, digitalization or digital transformation governance ecological or environmental and sustainable and, and sorry and social if you look at this picture um, as, uh, as one of our colleagues noticed this is uh, mathematically incorrect why we're saying three plus four equal five why should we say that so we have three esg uh, corners right and then we have four corners of the digital transformation the point is governance and social cannot be split between digital transformation and ESG transformation. Hence, to resolve this issue of uh, short-term sustainability and long-term longevity of the company, we have to create a framework which actually provides the fundamentals for the governance, uh, for the board of directors, for the finance industry, for the uh, insurance industry to assess risks. And of course, to reward companies which are solid in, solidly into value creation. 
So uh, a little bit more about ESG uh, in in the or edges in the context of uh, AKFI. Uh, what you can see here uh, in the first part of the presentation, we talked about the integration under single governance of uh, value creation, profitability, digital technology or digitalization, environmental and social. We call it edges for for us to remember it. And as you can see, this can be uh, um, converted, can be expanded into a framework that can be useful for a complete analysis, uh, a better analysis, a more uh, detailed analysis, if you want, of uh, ESG investments uh, and uh, digital transformation investments by companies. I'll conclude. Uh, and I'll go quickly with two case studies on ESG, uh, risk caused by digital transformation. So electric vehicles came to my mind to be one good case study. Why? Because they bridge between technology. Uh, cars are considered today as being uh, a device, more like your um, smartphone. Uh, rather than just a vehicle for transport. And electric vehicles go definitely in that direction. Uh, Elon Musk was many times on the record when he talked about Tesla as being a platform, not a car. Uh, it can be updated, it can be upgraded, uh, it can be monitored and so on remotely. And you can see the relationship between the electric vehicles and the edges. The, 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 uh, the governance of both technology, value creation, and the uh, ESG governance for environmental and social. And, and the cars have huge show, social impact. We design cities in the US to accommodate cars, not humans, for instance. This is, and I'm not going to go in details, but this is a study that AKFI did recently and submitted to the regulators of uh, failures and you can see here uh, the brand names of the car companies that failed uh, on different uh, ESG parameters as they try to uh, change technology to digital uh, and, and a lot of the failures are uh, uh, caused by design batteries especially but um, we can also see failures uh, related to fraud. Uh, Volkswagen comes first to, the, to our mind. Uh, we can see also uh, labor management and, and other issues related to governance. So um, I, we will share the slides and you have the chance to read it in details and ask us questions to follow up. Uh, but here is the case of, uh, and, uh, the, the, moving toward the conclusion is the case of ESG lessons learned from uh, a major uh, digital transformation failure. So let's start with the fact that this cost uh, uh, the former CEO of Ford uh, Fields, uh, Mark Fields cost, uh, cost him his job. He decided in 2014 to make huge investments in digital uh, huge advertising. He, he went to actually Mobile World Congress in 2016 to present the Ford Smart Mobility uh, and, uh, and to focus on actually transforming the industry. He made a number of uh, governance mistakes. One of them was to separate, it's supposed to integrate the electric vehicle segment with the current design and, and the current manufacturing, uh, creating unnecessarily duplication of efforts. And uh, after dumping a huge amount of money and, and the, the stock dropped about 40%, uh, uh, Mark was replaced by, by one of the uh, uh, family uh, members. And, uh, and the, the project, was deemed a failure and completely uh, uh, was completely uh, stopped. However, 
there were lessons to be learned. And I'm really thrilled to hear, to see that Ford is probably the first large company, at least the first large company that I know, that integrated the sustainability and financial report in one report. They are actually recognizing <coughs> that uh, digital capabilities cannot be separated from the economics, from the social, uh, from the environmental. Uh, and, uh, and this is, I think, marks a very important turning point in the industry that um, the, the company recognizes. Uh, when they look at the stockholders, they look at the cities, they look at the uh, experience of the customers, and of course they look at safety and efficiency and uh, uh, better environmental uh, support by using electric vehicles in the cities, reducing pollution, especially in the cities. So this is, a, this is a, an example of our company after taking uh, no pun intending, the wrong turn, uh, can uh, recover and actually using uh, a similar framework that the AKFI proposes, uh, recover from, from failure. Uh, so this is the conclusion. Uh, I encourage you to visit our website or at the beginning of the presentation, you have my email address if you have more questions. Uh, I'll turn it uh, right away to Alex for his presentation. And thank you very much. Hey, could you uh, up from screen share? Okay, so I will start with the screen share of mine. So can you see my screen, Manuel? Absolutely. Please okay. go ahead and apologize for being over time. I'll go on mute. Uh, I can go ahead with time limitation, no problem. Yeah. Okay. So um, what I'm going to talk about today is because uh, Manuel already talked about the, the higher level and strategy aspect of the ESG and digital transformation integration. So I'm going to talk about more like low level practical uh, aspect of the ESG and digital uh, transformation. So uh, first, uh, I want to you uh, share you about the uh, uh, because uh, everyone might be uh, already know about the, what the ESG sustainability imperative in a management aspect and investing as well and regulation aspect. I summarize everything to to help you to remind. So basically, at the uh, like a company corporate enterprise level, the we should have in mind is like a so-called stakeholder capitalism so that the the main purpose of enterprise is shifted from the shareholder value to the stakeholder value but still we have in mind that still capitalism is there that's the point i'm going to talk about later and also we have a for example in the business wide the customers their uh, generation changes is we call millennium. And then also recently I'm I'm also talking about the like the G generation, the much younger generation, and the, their taste to select the product or service is different from the like my generation is baby boom generation. So it's a different uh, view. And then also there are a lot of their like investment is going on. And then and then also in the like uh, people-wise, community-wise, and then art-wise, there are a lot of the concern about the climate change, and then also about the, like a circular economic food, like a natural resources waste month. And then also we should think about the, how much money is put in, like a $53 trillion will be put in in, in relate to ESG sustainability, like investment side. And then also like uh, internationally, there is a, a global level like uh, United Nations and Davos, and even at, at the government level in for each country, concern about this ESG issues. And then also you may recently heard about like a $2 trillion uh, infrastructure plan in, in Joe Biden government. Okay, so based on, this is a fundamental thing we have, have in mind when you talk about uh, ESG. So basically, uh, ESG 
investment management should consider three core factors as a risk and opportunity and impact. And then and what I have in, have in mind that I, to why I look at the, this side in, in uh, like uh, very intensively, the current uh, like uh, literatures and researches and papers and insight from the old professionals in, in this area. And then I, I found that there is something red that actually the, in their viewpoint, for example, that these three factors that should be considered as a one, and then should be think about like a maximize the goal and optimize for the operation for management. For example, that the 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 mention that I have uh, the lack the view in the lag is that for example the investor said like okay so uh, we wanna invest in some company some company and then the 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 reason that they, they invest in the in the the company is that because they want to see how well this company will manage this risk from the, the like all kind of like uh, ESG issues, like uh, for example, climate changes, like a uh, universal risk or whether some in industry risk, like uh, for example, cybersecurity or the privacy matters or labor matters. And also like a government matter, like uh, for example, some of the like a uh, corruption or some honesty uh, measure. But for, for doing that actually the we, some way they trade up, for example, they, they, they don't think about like, uh, even they can well manage this risk. There should be another ways they should manage this opportunity and impact. The impact means the impact on their, uh, their, the coming from uh, the enterprise management, ESG management to the earth and people and community. So, so these three factors should be think of uh, as a one, and then should we think about as a maximize and optimize for how you can choose one as a priority. So the so traditional ways, for example, impact, impact investing, they more insist on the impact for the, like how they impact on the like ours or the government or the, the economics or society and people, but they trade off, they insist this one as a priority, but they, they trade or uh, maybe uh, maybe we don't maybe not concern much about the return economic return or something like that but that's not the uh, the correct way to think about these three core factors the, that's why I, I i think about what's the best way to think about three as a one and systematically and the maximize a goal and optimize for each factors in in a in depending on their priority so that's that's one I'm uh, main focus that I'm I'm trying to solve. Here is the one actually the uh, recent uh, there was a uh, Accenture is a global uh, business consulting company. They have uh, they actually the survey the like around uh, around the world like Europe and US and Asia around the four thousand executives about the, how about think about their the ESG management. And then you can see that uh, why they actually the, they doing ESG business practice, and then uh, here is like environmental issue. Yeah, they think about the, yeah there is a lot of the like uh, climate change. So it's a it's a global concern, and also because of the regulation, like regulators uh, impose that they should do, and then also for example like SEC also try to make a transparency about their like uh, management. So they 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 try to, to have a regulate for the disclosure of these matters. But the, but the important thing is this side, business opportunity, right? Here is a growth and revenue potential. It's a, it is a most less they think about it. But you know that the fundamental I talk about the, like a stakeholder cap capitalism, that the fundamental thing in the capitalism is money, investing and manage and revenue, right? So this point actually still people think about the executives think about this ESG management as of course, Latin revenue generator, gross engine. So this is something that missing that we should uh, concern about. And then we need to, to make the better insight that actually this ES can be a gross engine can generate revenue, not the cost factors. So. Here is one example that if your company pursuing the twin transformation, 
twin transformation means that the, the distal and the EST integrated transformation that I call EST DX. And this is my forum name. And then, and then you can actually get 2.5x. But I can say that like a more than like, a, I, can, I can say that like a 10x can be possible using my methodology. Okay, so uh, this is uh, um, some back to basic. So I would think about the, how ESDX, the, how they integrate can create a new revenue stream. So, so there may be many uh, other ways actually can generate the value by the ESDX. But I want to focus on this because I, I, I saw that a lot of the investors and even the companies are thinking about that, whether why they, they do this ESG sustainability management. And then, and then they, they, they think about they can be like a gross engine and then generate the value, for especially the financial like a value specifically linked to revenue stream. So is there really that this can be happen? Yes, that's when I, I, I look at it, the, the older like ESG management stuff and then and the other digital transformation matter. And then I, I approach this aspect from the fundamental level. Okay, so uh, because already Manuel talked about, so ESG transformation, what is the ESG transformation? I start from this. So they using the digital technology. So technology is engine and data and process and changing, right? So this is the one actually the having the in the nature of uh, ESG uh, e uh, digital transformation. Okay, then how digital transformation can help you to generate the money? And then you should think about the, the way actually the, the enterprise general money is through their business model. So, so what is a factor of the business model? You should think about like uh, they create and capture value. So customer value proposition, you may know about, and then and the create value and operating model is deliver the create value. And the product or service innovation is actually the create value serve and the value capture is to monetize. And then, and then through this process, pricing mechanism and the cash flow generation. So, so all this one, if you can show that ESG can integrate with the digital transformation and can form this business model, then naturally they can generate the cash flow. That, that's my uh, conjecture. Then I, I also develop like, uh, okay, then how more specifically talk about it. Okay, so ESG generation is doing is that digital transformation itself will reshape the cost of a value proposition, transforming operating model, and then they will provide like efficient and productive gain and accelerating product and service innovation. And then what, what so comes up is a digital business model, completely new business model can different ways to generate money, right? And then you can think about like a new, the new type of this kind of digital business model that you think of Uber, like AMB, like Amazon, every company starting from some traditional ways to make money in the industry. And then they come out with their completely different model this based on this digital transformation. And then they generate a lead to a new uh, revenue generation. So I can show the proof, yes, Digital transform can make money and they can be integrated ESG and then they can make money. So this I call sustainable digital business model. So it's the same way that integrating ESG sustainability into all these aspects like value proposition, operating model, innovation process process, and all the, this digital business model, then you can, for example, that you can generate cost to saving reduce business and ESG risk, sustainable resource use, improve business resilience, customers trust and expand the market opportunity. What? This can generate the cash flow. So, so I can say that definitely doing ESG DX, you can generate a new stream. It's not the cost anymore. Okay. So then uh, what's the uh, other uh, like uh, value then create? In, in a practical way, to especially the tied into the, the ESG sustainability management investing. Here is the one is like they can do like a real time informed decision making and regard the management strategy and material ESG issues. 
And then, and then you may understand like E material means that the material for the financial materiality and the materiality for the like a social and economic value. So actually the, they can, how they integrate the cost centralized ES data management friend for the transparency that that's required if every investor want transparency in the data. So it, it can be achieved. And there also like a continuous tracking improvement of ESG management performance KPI. And then also like assessment ESG management performance. And then in the scenario analysis for to, to handling the uncertainty. And then they can come up with like, uh, for example, the identifying of the like ESG risk and then also like ESG impact. And then also implementing virtual collaboration that I'm going to talk about this uh, specific topics maybe the, in, the, in my next webinar. But this way, the fundamental tool can innovate this in ESG sustainability management and then visually uh, the traceability across the value and supply chain. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about detail. I'm going to share this one later. Uh, but uh, this is the way actually in the practical ways actually you can manage all kind of the like uh, uh, issues and challenges in, in the ESG sustainability management and, and then investing using digital and transformation. So I just summarize all the, all the current issues and challenging that uh, through my intensive research in, in ESG sustainability and management investing community, and then how they actually can solve by this ESG transformation. So I, I recommend you uh, to look at this later. And then for that, actually, the, I, I want to have some like uh, insight from not just me, from other experts. So I, I, I uh, like uh, founded this ESDX forum to, to initiate this kind of the new way to think about to, uh, to handling and then, and then solve the, the issues and then uh, like uh, challenges in ESG management and investing side. Okay, so uh, what's the next actually that I'm, I'm uh, practically uh, come up with the idea how actually can provide a practical solution to this. So, so I, I recently come up with a very good technology coming out. They call the digital twin metaverse, and then and then I can I can uh, I can uh, tell the detail about this one now. But I can I am going to do in the next week about the specifically that uh, doing this kind of the metaverse digital twin that actually I can develop a very practical solution can integrate ESG and in, in digital transformation and can solve nearly all aspect of the, this, the current the ESG issues and, and then like, a, like a challenges. So I, I'm really excited to come up with the idea. So this is one idea that, uh, because I have, a, I have discussed a lot of the, uh, the ESG professionals and I found that they have some, they need to open their eyes because this is my 30 years experience and innovator, right? Because most of the innovation coming from the different aspect, different eyes. For example, that I'm a pattern attorney, that a lot of the invention, and the for example, there is a trees, like uh, how you can invent. One way is to think about your current you, like uh, invention to different like uh, application. For example, aspirin was uh, initially developed for the like uh, headache machine, the medicine. But uh, later they think about uh, they can be also treat like uh, your like a. Uh, uh, heart disease, right? It's a new discovery, right? You can do the same thing. So they should have open eye and then let bring the expert like me in the different eyes, different experience in different industry and in different technology, and then try to solve their problem. They can generate a new insight. That's what I try to insist uh, up to now, but maybe not not difficult time, but well, I'm, I will take time, but I'm going to show to how actually can do and how actually can uh, you can uh, they can do through the, my method? And I'm going to show the how, and I'm going to show evidence in in the future. Okay, so this is an appendix actually. The based on uh, up to now, I have done like I have I generate a lot of the useful things to uh, actually implementation solution, and then and then some reporting generation. Then this is one TCFD is uh, some kind of the crime climate change like uh, related to the reporting. And then they require some scenario planning, and then and then I can show that this can be optimized and quantified by the my solution. 
and then also like a, like a lot of the like issues in the how they can be generated as a gross gross machine and then all kind of investing uh, asset and the also research corporation itself has very very good tools to read into this kind of the integration so so that's it so i i hope that uh, you uh, just uh, have some essential part of my methods but uh, uh, for details i, I recommend that you read this or I, I i made this one very detailed in the script so you can you can look at it later okay that's it okay so uh it's only three minutes later i, I tried my best yeah and we can extend it, Alex. Uh, at least I can stay on. Uh, want to thank you. Uh, want to thank you for uh, for the uh, the uh, introduction to to the metaverse in few words. Uh, let's open to questions. Um, you can ask questions either on uh, on uh, the chat or uh, turn on your um, your speaker and please ask it in person. Um, hi. hi, I just want to go back to the in the beginning, you told us to think of the question regarding this whole aspect and what would happen if Zoom collapsed and how would people face it. And that's also I wanted to bring to the forefront that Facebook's collapse was not just a social media collapse. It had a major impact on companies. And I think that has been overlooked by main media. They talk about Oh, someone can send a message, hi to their friends and stuff. And that again shows us we depend a lot on communication platforms, which we have no control over. And a lot of companies are realizing this freeness that they got was not really free. And also too, you found that um, a lot of people don't know Facebook actually has communication platforms, which people pay to have access to, and that and all went down. So we have asked companies to move to use things more digitally, and I, that may have an impact on people. They are now realizing it's not as reliable because it literally was six hours of downtime. If you lived in the on our side of the world, that was it because it went down at around 5 p.m. European time, and it never came back until something to midnight. So that was goodbye to that. But I do think that um, getting people, every time we have a mistake digitally, it, it removes the trust factor people have, and therefore it could make work even harder to get people to believe that the digital transformation is the way to go. Therese, you're pointing actually to a core element as companies are moving more to digital, they are taking risks, not for their own, only for their operations, of course, not only for data, not only for even uh, being off for a day or multiple days, but also they are taking risks uh, on the social aspect. They are taking risks on ecological aspects. Uh, companies, for instance, may manage water supply. Um, uh, Continental was the pipeline that went down for a week in uh, linking Texas, the, the lo longest pipeline in, uh, in, uh, st uh, in the United States, went down. People ran out of gas, couldn't go to work, couldn't go to get food to doctors. So the, once these companies are projected in this ecological system, we can see how uh, unprepared we are for evaluating risks. And of course, if we don't recognize the risk, we cannot mitigate the risk, we cannot take uh, you know, corrective actions. We, we, it just happens and it's one of these black swans that magically happen. They are not magic. A lot of them can be predicted. Thank you, thank you, Therese. Uh, anything to add, Alex, on, on Therese? Yeah, I think that uh, for the uh, business resilience, like the like the that, that happened in the Facebook, actually the the reason actually the they actually the need some some kind of specific solution. How can they have business resilience? Actually, the, there's a very very good timing actually there for the my next webinar next week. 
I'm going to talk about digital twin business model. And the, that's, that's one actually, the, in case that you have a, what happened that actually your business entity have a problem like this. And then there is a, like a continuity planning is a digital twin. Actually, digital twin is a digital representation of your business. So actually the making your business model through this digital twin, actually the, you can, you can continue to, continuously working on the, this kind of the resilience situation and also that uh, they can simulate because nobody knows about the future, right? Even AI can predict, but the predict is a, is a well expected predict because uh, people are just confused about AI can predict the future. No, they can predict based on your previous history data, right? So your future is well defined the future. They cannot predict like this kind of the happen like a Facebook happened yesterday or the COVID-19. But the only way is because of the, this, this situation in the scenario planning that under a certain T, and then you should develop a, a series of the scenario of what will happen, and then you can analyze what will happen, and then you have a separate options and then choose your strategy whether whether you can prepare the in the priority. So if Facebook actually really hurt this digital, digital company inside, then they have an inside strategy that this kind can happen. They can they need to be like a scenario planning and then prepare for this kind of thing. I, I actually I'm very disappointed about this aspect because uh, recently I, I liked the Facebook because uh, the the Jock the Jock will talk about that their company will anymore like as, uh, as uh, like a social network company they are going to change it to metaverse. Unfortunately, they announced metaverse company but they didn't prepare. So, but I'm going to talk about the uh, next webinar. But it's a good example that. Uh, ESG digital transformation is to be needed, and then they will provide the resiliency. And then this is one proof that we need it. Right? Facebook, yeah, excellent, right? It's a good timing, isn't it? And add a, a little footnote to Teresa's presentation. When we talk about economics, we should not only talk about the economics of the company, the profitability. But the economics of the uh, of the ecosystem of the social system the company operates. In. If your uh, your customers lose money because of you, there is not only a legal liability; there is a moral liability as well associated with this. Um, any other questions? We we open for questions either on chat or uh, uh, on. Um, uh, or live, so please feel free to to turn on your uh, uh, microphone and and uh, ask us questions. Hello, everybody. My name is Sanford Bessler. I just do you hear me. Yes, we hear I'm you, clear, sure you clearly. You hear you clearly. Okay. Hi. Um, I am just. Uh, I'm by education a, a computer scientist and and uh, working in energy, um, renewable energy things. So I'm just diving in in these uh, topics, and uh, one of my two cents remarks are, uh, I had the feeling that the high profit that that uh, the last speaker uh, alex um, just uh, repeated a few times is still something uh, coming into a objective function into our optimization uh, my my observation is just that i have the feeling that the environment uh, the the uh, the uh, um, um, labor uh, costs that have to be higher, for example, and uh, the, the privacy and the, uh, the other things uh, are actually uh, um, against or ad adverse to the high profit. So the environmental costs and all the things, the good things that, that we want to uh, um, include in, in the whole platform will increase the costs and uh, reduce the profit. Yeah, just to give you an example from the energy, uh, we, we, have, we have the idea of uh, energy communities 
and also the idea to to uh, uh, pay more for uh, the so-called uh, uh, solar energy, which should be free because it's 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 uh, it's uh, uh, has no costs. And the the idea is is even to pay more than normal energy from the utility uh, for the um, for the solar energy, yeah, because it comes into the willingness to pay of the customer that uh, green energy is uh, is more valuable, yeah. So that uh, that means that uh, we have different criteria now um, in having a, a so to say a ESG uh, system. Um, not only the uh, the profit. Um, this, this is an example from the energy market. Yeah, that was uh, my remark. What do you think about this? I mean, uh, of course, we have to make uh, to 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 provide uh, new values and uh, uh, systems that are economical and uh, still have a profit. But this profit is going to decrease as soon as you uh, have all these constraints and all these uh, good uh, properties uh, you would like in uh, SGDX system. Uh, Alex, maybe you want to address the comment, the, the, uh, the observation by uh, Sanford. Uh, I think that uh, the point is actually the, the what is the, the basic conjecture, right? For example, that if you said like ESG, for example, that this is the, like I have a business, I'm a business e e executive, and then somebody said to me that you need to do ESG. Why? It, it can be a generator your profit. No, that's not the conjecture, right? ESG is imposed by the society and economic system and the, and the government, right? ESG is is as ESG is the, is the like uh, the matter actually the voluntary selective as a business resources right so as a business mind ESG is not uh, like uh, like uh, as a traditional to like a business model it's not the ESG is not the like the the business resources we need to select for our society people and community and others right. So it is like a common responsibility, like a, like a, you may know about like a, some problem, like this common asset, right? Common value problem, right? <laughs> so, so my conjecture is that uh, I'm not suggest that ESTAs can be used as a gross engine and revenue generating model, but I'm I'm saying that if you need to do ESG management by this kind of the common value problem, common value conjecture, then Rather than just think about ESG as a cost model, then there is a better way to think about utilizing, leveraging this opportunity as a gross engine, right? So conjecture is that even you include like for energy sectors, uh, climate matters, like uh, climate risk can of uh, like, uh, as far as I understand, climate risk can be another factor like a raise of the energy, like a price or like oil price or gas price or, or like yeah. carbon tax or, all kind of things happen, yeah. right? And then yeah. the, the way actually the, as a businessman that I can do is that even take this one, but I want to like make more like a clever strategy to even utilizing this risk and the cost of factors to integrate with the digital transform as a, as a better way to better off from this situation, right? So that's what my comment was. Fundamentally, the conjecture is that we need to do ESG by this reason, not by the voluntary think of it as a business resource, but if we need to do and do better way, right? By integrating digital transformation. And there are many ways actually that the like a saving cost, not only the like a compensated cost by the generating more values, especially the economic directly related economic value. That was my, my insight. Yeah. Okay. You, Alex. Well, Maybe I'll add very quickly uh, one note to Sanford. Uh, digital transformation actually can be used to optimize the ESG investments. And uh, 
from a purely financial balance sheet, you may end up with a neutral or, or even a positive impact on looking at, uh, at ESG, uh, especially if you look from the prism of risks. So for instance, a company uses, uh, you know, steel metal companies use lots of water. What happens if the water resource uh, goes away, like what's happening in California these days? How is this company going to be sustained or survive? So factoring this data using digitalization can actually help the company at least predict or, or create uh, alternate uh, sources of water uh, to, to sustain their business. Simply business sustainability and, and resilience, not, not uh, even looking at the bigger picture of ESG factors. But uh, please go ahead. Uh, no, no, I, I understand this is uh, like an optimization. Uh, you have these externalities. So this, uh, what, what, all you, what you said, uh, uh, and Alex said, uh, like, like regulation, yeah? Uh, like uh, um, carbon footprint, uh, all these things, example with the water and, and uh, environment. Uh, and if this is model, then it's fine. Actually, then, uh, only sustainable uh, processes and, and companies will be uh, the good one that should be selected to the best. Yeah. You know that recently I have a very uh, interesting article that actually the, actually the ESG management actually can help to save the save us from the climate change risk, right? <laughs> Doing that actually only or maybe harm to do that, <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, he made very uh, like a uh, very good argument about the all kind of evidence, like uh, like of the uh, the complexity of the climate change and then how actually people are active for the the uh, his mention is that the the principal goal is good, like uh, through the ESG management, sustainability management actually can really try to solve this climate change risk, but the, the way actually doing actually harm. <laughs> To actually this to to, to to against this climate change, so uh, I I I'm not uh, I'm not a, that kind of the person to to delve into that kind of principle ways, but uh, we have in mind that uh, so the problem is not the the principle or goal, the problem is the the actually how actually people do it, right? So so actually the digital transformation and ESC also have a, like a like a culture and the mind transformation, right? That's a very important topic, right? We should change our mindset, right? <laughs> so, so that's the only, that's the, I think the most significant part, but I can have technology and everything, but I cannot do that, right? Is uh, that, that need some, some leadership or some way, <laughs> religion, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Any uh, other questions, comments, uh, ideas? Uh, please, please either use the chat or, or go online. And thank you, Sam, for, for your question and, 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 and your background. Hi, this is Gene with Susco and CRD Global. So, you know, my comment, it's not really a question, but, you know, we're watching this transformation actually happen. It's just moving at different paces for different companies globally. I think the unavoidable truth is that unless you actually combine the ESG lens with the digitization, then ultimately you will be left behind and it's just either the leaders will provide that value in showing those risks and rewards uh, and the laggards will wait until they actually become extinct. Um, comments earlier related to energy and solar and added costs and so some of those things that we're discussing, um, you know, the utilities are faced with their extinction unless they change their way of being and you know, they're working towards that now. I think the digitization part is, is really the new 
frontier of what is going to be bolted in. And I think your your presentation, um, Manuel, is, is very very well positioned for that type of uh, an understanding of, of where we're going with all this right now. It's 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 early days, but it's happening right in front of us. And um, you know, we we as a ratings group, we see many companies that are just challenged with just the ESG part, the reporting. They you know. The digitization is like a whole nother new world to them. So I think that that whole uh, process is being matured very quickly right now through regulation and also through um, their own survival. They're realizing that this is a risk based business and both investors, insurance companies are all looking at at how they're going and, and capital. If you're looking at uh, borrowing money, all those things come into play. And, and so not just the ESG, but if you're able to digitize that, then that provides the transparency needed, lower cost of capital, and your ability to survive. And so it's not just profitability, it's, it's survival. On top of that, you're, you're, you're looking at competitors that are able to do it, and maybe they're sacrificing some near-term profitability for some long-term survival and, and, and strategy. And so that, that's my comment. Thank you. And maybe next next time we'll talk about rating in in the next uh, webinar of AKFI. So uh, we're looking forward to to a discussion on ratings and how much they are reflective and, and can be used proactively, as you said, Gene, to um, to make things better. Simple. Alex, any? Any other comments on uh, uh, on on Gene or in general, Alex? Oh. I don't know if, if you can hear me. Sorry. Oh, I think that they, we already passed eighteen, <laughs> Travis. Uh, so yeah, uh, for the so we leave guys, we leave uh, a lot for next yeah, time, right? Yeah, we yeah we can talk about a lot in the next time, right? This is the first webinar of this series. So I think that we discussed uh, enough today. And then maybe we can, uh, we have a very good comment and then we can, we can select some very good topic in next time, right? So I think that this, this was a very, very, very useful like uh, the, the discussion today. So how about calling mm -hmm. today and then, and then and talk about uh, for another topic in the next webinar. Right? Sounds great. But as a final announcement, we're going to release the video and the slides with comments uh, in the next couple of days on on our sites, right? On on your site and and on the uh, actionable knowledge uh, forum, right? Site on on LinkedIn and and uh, uh, on the website. So uh, th this was. Uh, uh, recorded. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you very much for staying to the end, even as we went in overtime. Um, on my part, I'll buy an analog clock. My my telephone went blank during my presentation, so I had a little bit of issue of uh, monitoring time. So uh, thank you very much again. Have a good rest of the week, and uh, we'll all stay in touch. Okay. Thank you. Have a thank you, everyone. Day. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.